King Charles in the coming years will not move into Buckingham Palace. The reason is the extensive restoration of the palace. So for now the monarch's London residence will remain Clarence House. Charles and his wife, Camilla, lived here for nearly 20 years. We suggest we take a walk through their home and learn about the history of Clarence House. Clarence House was built in 1827 for the Duke of Clarence, later King William IV. The mansion was designed by architect John Nash, who also designed St. James Park and Trafalgar Square. Queen Victoria's relatives, Elizabeth and then her mother, lived here at various times. In 2003 the Prince of Wales moved into the mansion. Two years later Charles married Camilla Parker Bowles, after which the Duchess moved in with her husband. The couple currently owns properties all over the United Kingdom, but it is Clarence House, their main London residence. Charles will spend three days a week here except during the summer. The walk through the grounds begins with the majestic garden that the Prince of Wales created in memory of his grandmother, Queen Mother Elizabeth. From the garden, visitors enter the house. The first floor corridor holds many family heirlooms, paintings from Elizabeth's collection, rugs, tapestries and other artifacts. The first room visitors enter from the vestibule is the Lancaster Room. It is used as a waiting room for guests. It contains a collection of eight watercolor paintings by John Piper, an English artist whose stained glass windows can be seen in Cambridge and Washington Cathedral. On the wall of the room hangs a portrait of Edward, the only English monarch who voluntarily abdicated the throne. The reason for the scandalous act was that the government did not approve of Edward's marriage to the woman he loved. This is the room where the hosts receive their guests. It was originally designed as a breakfast room, and from 1949 to 1952, it served as an office for the Duke of Edinburgh, Elizabeth's husband. Many important events for the royal family occurred in the morning room. For example, it was here that memorable photographs were taken after Prince George and Prince Louis were baptized. In Nash's design, this room was the lobby, but Elizabeth decided to convert it into a small library. The room was first filled with bookshelves, and a little later with cabinets. The Queen Mother used the room as a dining room for dinners in a small circle of guests. Prince Charles supported this tradition and continued to occasionally host heads of state in the library. The library's jewel, four smaller statues of Bavarian rulers. They were created by the sculptor Ludwig Schwanthler in gilded bronze. Prince Albert gave a set of 12 of these statues to Queen Victoria for her birthday in 1843. The rest of the statues are also kept in Clarence House, in the dining room and in Lancaster Hall. Directly from the library, house guests enter the dining room. Prince Charles commissioned a bronze vault to decorate the ceiling of this room. The garden room, the most beautiful room of the residence. Charles's grandmother created it from two rooms added to the house in the 1870s. This room contains many family photographs, paintings and other works of art, and its main treasure is a grand piano and a gold harp. The garden room has a stunning view of the garden. This is where Charles and Camilla most often receive important and influential guests.